This is Aaron Hill again, coming to you from my office at the University of Wisconsin-Madison Mead Witter School of Music. I hope you enjoyed my last video going through my basic oboe warm-up, where I like to be able to slur at a low C from anywhere on the instrument. On days when that warm-up goes especially well, I have a more advanced warm-up that's more challenging, uh, that really shows me if my air is fast enough and if my face has the right amount of muscular tension without any support from biting with the jaw. What I like to do with this warm-up is test if I can always slur to a low B and if my high B is always up to pitch. And that's why I call it attack of the killer Bs. So low B naturally is hard to slur to. Requires especially fast air and it requires that you definitely not be using any jaw tension. Now high B among the high notes, I don't want to say that it's a note that tends flat, but it's certainly less susceptible to going sharp than the other high notes around it. So if you're playing the rest of the time and you're playing sharp, the high B will sound flat relative to those other notes. I'll do a B major arpeggio for an example. You can hear how that high B will show your tension in the rest of the notes by not cooperating. The way that I like to get my high B in tune with the rest of what I'm playing is by, rather than any tension in the jaw, I like to pick up my eyebrows a little bit and make sure that my air is spinning up. And that way I can get a little bit excited about it. It also looks like I'm playing musically when really I'm just trying to play in tune. For this exercise, I like to have the low B be the lowest note, the high B be the highest note, with the middle B in between. The thing that I change with each pattern is that I go chromatically up and include one other pitch. So first I have Bs with Cs. So B, low C, middle B, middle C, high B, middle C, middle B, low C, low B. And it goes up chromatically so that the next pattern goes with C sharp. A few of these notes have tricky aspects and I'll go through them one at a time. C sharp, if your instrument is a professional model or intermediate model instrument that has a low B key that overrides using the C sharp key, you can keep the C sharp key down the whole time. If your instrument doesn't have that override, you'll need to flip over from the C key to the C sharp, which can be challenging, especially in Tombo de Couperin, uh, that first page. And then that one actually goes fairly easily if you can work out the fingering. For D sharp, I like to use a un slightly unorthodox fingering strategy, and on the way up, because it's hard to slide on the left side, but it's easy to slide on the right side, I, I go to right D sharp from the low B, but on the way down, it's hard to slide to the left with the right hand, so I flip over with the left hand, like I would in the fourth movement of Scheherazade. <laughs> And then as usual, F provides a complicated set of fingering choices. From low B, you can't get to the standard right key F. You also really can't get to left F. So in the low register, you're forced to use the forked F, which comes with the risk of it being unresponsive because of the cross fingering, which is why I usually try to avoid forked F whenever possible. But see what might happen in the low register. First, I'll play an example that sounds a little bit muffled. <laughs> That can often be a risk. So that means the air needs to be fast and direct before your fingers leave the low B in order to anticipate the cross fingering. And then it works out okay. In the high register, I use the normal right key F. For the G sharp, in the low register, coming from low B, because it's hard to slide back over to the left G-sharp, that's an example where I'll use the right G-sharp key. And on the way down, I have to make extra sure to lay my, my right hand index finger flat to get back to the F-sharp key. And those 
those are all the tricks necessary. The real challenge is putting them all together, and I'll attempt to do the entire attack of the killer bees for you now, and I hope it goes well. Thanks for joining me on, Pack, on Attack of the Killer Bees. I hope you enjoy working with it. It's good to start with doing one, two, or three of those notes at a time before you try putting it all together. You can also do it backwards, starting on A sharp and ending on C. There's a lot of fun that you can have with it, but it guarantees to me that your low notes are going to come out and that your high notes will probably be as stable as possible. I look forward to next month's installment. Thanks very much.